I was Christian. However, I had some problems with the um, with the aqidah of Christianity. So I believe in Allah who had. I believe in one God, but I wasn't sure about Isa and Islam being the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I didn't really understand this. How can somebody be God and son of God at the same time? I found this confusing. عاشت طفولتها في مدينة شيفيلد ببريطانيا بعد أن تبنتها عائلة مسيحية كانت تحب العلم والاطلاع. هناك تعرفت على الإسلام عن طريق صديقة مسلمة لم تكن ملتزمة بالإسلام بشكل كامل ولكنها كانت سبب لهداية داعية اسمها أمينة بلك And she invited me to her house to stay because I had some problems And when I went in the house there was one book in the house only and I love books And the one book in the house was what? The Quran كلام الله and it was fil inglesi wa fil arabi kaman nos binos okay so i said to her what's this what's this book i want to look and she said okay خلاص wash your hands and you can look and i opened this quran and i saw like the bible the stories yusuf alayhi salam ibrahim alayhi salam all these prophets that i was growing up from as a child and i was like oh it's amazing because in england we're taught islam is Allah and Christianity is God. Two different things. Then I understood. So what happens then? I start asking questions. When a delil? You saying this is kalam Allah, when a delil? Prove it. She couldn't prove it. She didn't have the knowledge. So she passed me to a brother and he said, give me two days, three days, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you. And he came back with Allah's verses, talking about the uh, mountains, talking about where the child is created inside the mother, scientific proof. And then he said, guess what? He said, this was revealed to a man who was illiterate no. in the middle of Sahara, in the middle of the desert, 1400 years ago. And I was like, that's amazing. That's amazing. Actually, when, when any person becomes Muslim, whether they are born as a Muslim or they are like me and come into Islam from outside Islam, they need, like a cake needs ingredients, correct? So they need two ingredients. They need ilm and the qalb, the iman. So the ilm was then complete, but there was one last element to include, and that was the qalb, the iman. هذه رسالة لكل مسلم لا تستحقر كلماتك البسيطة عن الإسلام لا تغفل أنك تمثل الإسلام بتصرفاتك وكلماتك أنت قدوة لأنك من أتباع محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ألا يكفيك هذا الشرف أن تحمل هم الدعوة للإسلام؟ هذه الأخت المسلمة قليلة العلم ولكنها كانت سبب في إسلام الأخت أمينة والتي أصبحت داعية منذ 27 سنة the brother who told me about the, the ayat in the Quran of the, the mountains and everything, he gave us a film, a video called the Rasala, the message is about the seerah of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the last part of the film, and what did I hear? The adhan. Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And when I heard this adhan, I felt like bahar, warm, and like fizzy. And I felt like full of peace, sakina, fi qalbi. And I said to my friend, if this is the feeling that you get from just the call to prayer, just hayya ala salah bas, then I have to be Muslim and I have to do it now. Sama'ha lil adhan faqat. فتح قلبها للإسلام فكيف سيكون أثر الصلاة والذكر؟ مواقف صعبة كثيرة ممكن تمر علينا في هذه الحياة خير معين لك على أعباء الحياة هي تلك العبادات التي علمتنا إياها سورة المزمل منها الذكر والدعاء والصلاة والصدقة بدأ الله سبحانه وتعالى هذه السورة سورة المزمل بالصلاة بل بصلاة خاصة ومميزة وهي قيام الليل بقوله تعالى يا أيها المزمل قم الليل إلا قليلا 
خاف النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فأمره الله سبحانه وتعالى بقيام الليل وأنت كذلك كل ما أخافك وأحزنك أمر استعن بقيام الليل الصلاة الأولى كان لها أثر كبير في حياتك إلى هذا اليوم حدثينا عن أهمية الصلاة في حياتك Many new Muslims when they become Muslim they are isolated and there's a lot of wisdom in this. Allah is Al-Hakim. And actually the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was finding Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he was doing it through isolation. He goes to the mountain, he goes to the cave, he prays, he reflects. As a new Muslim, I was seeking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So I had the belief, I had the qalb, I had the, the ilm, but I needed to find the salah as the next stage. And I was desperate. So I was asking friends, I need knowledge. I need to learn how to pray. Show me. They couldn't. I was isolated on my own. I felt alone. I felt very negative. I had to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of speaking to friends, I should turn to Allah first. Mm-hmm. Allah says in the hadith, doesn't he? Hadith Qudsi, that when my servant walks to me, I will run to him. So I had to walk first. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened doors for me. So I ended up meeting Sister Tracy, who was my mentor, my teacher, and also helped me to learn the salah. But actually, this was just ilm. We also had to have the qalb, the iman to start the salah. I had a friend whose uncle I remembered I used to see him come into the room and he would pray every day, pray, pray all the time. Subhanallah, Allah rahmu, the brother died. The brother died. He was 50, 55 years old, young. And they invited me to the janazah. Now, English people, we don't see death. And they invited me and they wanted me to go and see his face. And I was scared. I never saw somebody dead before. And so they said, come, come, say goodbye to the uncle. So I went and I looked into the kafan and his face was still open. Allah al-Azim, as I'm sitting here, he was like Sakina and he was smiling. And when I saw him, all I could remember, this is the man who does his salah. If I want this Sakina that he has, I have to do the salah. And from after that, I never missed a salah single one. بدأ قيام الليل كفرض على كل مسلم في بداية الوحي. ثم خفف الله سبحانه وتعالى على المسلمين فأصبح القيام تطوع. فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى قم الليل إلا قليلة. المهمات العظيمة لا مكان فيها للقعود والكسل. قم وانشط وتحرك وأنجز. مما يميز صلاة الليل عن الصلاة المكتوبة أن الصلاة المكتوبة يؤديها أغلب المسلمين. بينما صلاة الثلث الأخير من الليل يؤديها من اصطفاهم الله سبحانه وتعالى من المؤمنين الصلاة المكتوبة ربما يصليها البعض رياء أما صلاة الليل فلا يصليها أحد إلا خفية خالصة لله سبحانه وتعالى الله يجعل يا رب عبادة لله سبحانه وتعالى عون لنا في الدنيا والآخرة أختي أمينة ما هو الموقف اللي أثر فيك من حياة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام وسيرة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام النبوية the whole of the story of the seerah, all of them, uh, for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa are amazing. But there's one particular one that actually helps to boost our iman. It helps us to have tawakkal in Allah. Because we say we have tawakkal in Allah, but actually sometimes we don't. And this is an incident that happened and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is sitting with Abu Bakr and some of the Quraysh, they're also in this group. And one of the Quraysh, he's saying bad things to Abu Bakr, things to try and make him za'al, to try and make him say something back. And Abu Bakr, he sits quiet. And while he's quiet, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he's sitting, he's smiling. And the Quraysh, they keep on, on, on at him. And eventually Abu Bakr, he breaks. He, subhanallah. And he speaks back. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at this moment, he gets an upset look on his face. 
and he leaves. And Abu Bakr is like, what happened? He went to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, when you, when you were sitting smiling, when the Quraysh were saying bad things to me, and as soon as I answered, you looked upset, you got up and you left. Why? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, while you were sitting quiet, there was a malaika answering for you Allah. on your behalf. And when you answered, the malaika left, the shaitan arrived, and I will not sit in a gathering. Allah. Where is the shaitan? So I got up and I left. Allah. When we have people backbiting against us, when we have people making fitna, we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send us help in ways that we do not understand. It's part of al ghaib And this is a strong lesson that I've learned through my years, being a female scholar, a female speaker in the public eye. I have a lot of criticism from people. You shouldn't be speaking. You should be this. You should be that. But actually, the times when I have not answered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent people and situations to answer on my behalf. When I do answer, then it's the wrong decision. أختي أمير أنت حجيتي مرة واحدة. اللهم لك الحمد. وسمعت أن لك تجربة جميلة جدا في الحج. حدثينا عنها. Hajj made me really love the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم more than I already did. سبحان الله. So when I went to Hajj, I went, I did the everything in 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 Mecca, and then of course. We went to Medina. As soon as I hit Medina, I felt Sakina. Now, while I was in Mecca, I had a dream. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to me in the dream. And he was standing in front of me. He didn't say nothing, but I knew it was him. When I went to Medina, I was in a hotel that overlooked the qabr of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the green dome and everything. And I came into the room late at night. So I prayed my qiyam al-layl, my witr. And then I got into bed. And I was thinking about the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And I thought, I remember hadith. That if you give salam to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he gives the salam back to you. So I'm lying down. I make my dhikr. I make my dua. And I'm not sleeping. I'm just... Tired but not sleep. And I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as I said this, I felt the feeling that I felt when I first heard the adhan warm, fuzzy, total peace, sakina, iman. And I heard like a distance sound, walikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Azim as I'm sitting here today. And this made me love the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even more than I already did. Habibi ya Rasulullah, Habibi.